over dental x-ray image characteristics. This is mainly review, so it should be pretty quick. So radiographs appear as black or white images. They have some varying shades of gray as well. Radiolucent is that dark area or black area on the film. That part lacks density. Radiopaque is the structures that appear white and they're very dense. They absorb or resist the passage of the x-ray beam. Diagnostic image is the proper density and contrast. It has sharp outlines, same shape and size as an object. Nothing is too magnified. Density is the degree of overall darkness or blackness. Relative transparency depends on the distribution of the black silver particles in emulsion. The image requires enough density to visually separate it from each other. If the density is too great or the film appears, then the film will appear too dark. So correct density allows for the separation of black, white, and gray areas like this picture right here. So there are different influences, uh, influencing factors on densities, and three of them are exposure factors. Milliamperage, kilovoltage, and exposure time. Those should be straight up, you guys should know that by now. And the subject thickness is another influencing factor. And again, like I went over in the last video, anything that increases the exposure factors, that'll increase the density as well. That's M-A-K-V-P in time. Any of those go up, density will go up. Any of those go down, density will go down. So subject thickness, this is dependent on the actual person. So subject, patient, that's what it means. So fewer x-rays reach a patient that has increased amount of soft tissue or thick, dense bone, as in like a football player or someone that works out a lot. If they have like a lot of muscle, they have very thick, dense bones. And the radiograph can appear lighter or, and have less density, so you have to adjust the factors to compensate with the subject thickness. Contrast, so that's a degree, the difference in degrees of blackness or densities between the adjacent areas, which we learned in the last video. It's how sharply dark and light areas are seen on a film. High contrast, the dental image has very dark areas and very light areas. Light contrast, it doesn't have a lot of dark and light areas, but it has many shades of grays. We want a compromise between those two that way or a balance between those two to get, you know, a good picture. So overall contrast is determined by film contrast and subject contrast. Film contrast is under the manufacturer control. It's affected by the development time, the developer temperature, and it increases in either and it increases in either increases density. Subject contrast depends on the person. That's determined by their thickness, the density and composition of the subject. For example, how would you what would you do with the kilovoltage if you were working on a um, child versus a football player, you have to adjust it for those two people because the thickness is different depending de between those two people. And it influences the radiograph contrast and it can be altered by the kilovoltage, going up or down on the kilovoltage. So the higher the kilovoltage, that'll affect the image contrast. So it'll increase the mean or average of the energy and it'll produce higher energy x-rays and more areas of the varying tissue density are recorded. They appear as many shades of gray, which is low contrast. Lower kilovoltage setting, setting produces high contrast or image with increased or high contrast. So you will have more black and white areas. And then this just shows contrast. Okay, so there is a different scale that we use. You have a short scale and a long scale. The short scale has high contrast. The long scale shows low contrast with the L and L together. So there are only two densities in the short scales, and that's many black and white areas and very sh few shades of gray. Um, it has very dark and very light areas. It's good for detection of caries, and the machine functions at low KVP 65 to 70. All of this is review. Long scale or low contrast has many densities because remember low contrast has a lot of shades of grays. And remember, like we said in the last video, it's good for detection of periodontal or periapical disease, and it functions at high KVP greater or equal to 90 kVp. And we want that proper balance between kVp and Ma for the optimal image. See, this one is too light, this one is too dark, and B is just right. Geometric characteristics, so we look at the sharpness, the magnification, and distortion. So the sharpness is the capability of the receptor to produce distinct outlines. We don't want unsharpness, we don't want image sharp, uh, we don't want blurring images. But 
unfortunately, it is always present in every radiograph, but you can control how much. And that's called a manubra, penubra. That's that unsharpness that is always there in a radiograph. And sharpness is influenced by three factors, film composition, focal spot size, and movement. So emulsion, the sharpness is relative to the crystal size in the emulsions. So the faster film have larger crystals, but they don't produce very sharp images. Slow films have smaller crystals, which have more sharpness. The focal spot size, this is a single point where you would produce a sharp image with no penumbra, but this is impossible due to the limited capacity of the x-ray tube. And the focal spot size is determined by the manufacturer. A smaller focal spot has a sharper image, smaller penumbra, and the smallest focal spot area is possible used to minimize heat and damage. Movement, if the patient moves or the film moves or the PID moves, that can cause uh, it, loss of image sharpness. Magnification, this is when the image appears larger than actual size of the object it represents. We learned about this. So magnification results from divergent paths as they radiate to form, radiate from the focal spot. And there are two influencing factors, the object receptor distance and the target receptor distance. The object receptor distance is the distance between the tooth and the receptor. And because the um, because you have to have parallelism, you will get image magnification. Because of the curvature of the palate, you want to keep the receptor parallel to the longest of the tooth, you're going to get, um, what's it called, image magnification. And that's because you go further and further away from the tooth because you can't be right against the tooth because you need to maintain parallelism. And you need to compensate for image magnification by target receptor distance. So target receptor distance is in increasing the distance between the source, the target, and the receptor. And it's determined by the length of the PID. A longer PID and target receptor distance results in more parallel and less, diverge less divergence. So you would have less image magnification. Distortion is the variation in true size and shape. It results from unequal magnification of different parts of the same objects, and it's caused by improper film alignment and angulation of the beam. So object receptor alignment, it must be parallel to avoid angular relationships and distortion. Angular relationships produce variations in distances between tooth and film. It rather seem too short or too long, elongation, foreshortened. Correct beam angulation, the beam must be perpendicular to the tooth and the film.